And that is the president in his 11th public address to ordinary Ghanaians. But we know that the content of the speech foremostly did direct that now it is illegal for anyone to leave their home and get into the public space without wearing a mask. But we also do know there's a, an executive instrument, and the latest we'll share with you based on what the content are, which is going to guide us for the next one month and a half. But look, we have to comprehensively look at this because all these measures have been introduced, uh, made all the directives that tertiary institutions could now allow their final year student to go back to the classroom. And indeed, a lot of consultation, as the president enumerated, had been undertaken. And uh, the senior minister with that committee had made sure that those consultations with management of various public universities had been made possible. But let's also look at the perspective uh, of the lecturers, the management of the schools, to get to know what, how ready they are, as we also look forward to other discussions like concerns on the public universities bill. Well, we have Prof Professor Kujo Apiejechia. He is a law lecturer and with the University of Ghana, but also uh, speaks for the University of Ghana at UTAC. And he is joining us on stream. Uh, good morning to you, Prof. Can you hear me very well? OK, I think you have to unmute your sound. The, and then Isaac J. Hyde is NUC's president. And they take care of the affairs of students, especially at the tertiary level. Uh, Isaac, can you hear me? Yeah, I can, Roland. Okay. Good morning. Okay, Prof. Prof, can you hear me? Yes, I do. Okay. Thank you for having me. Okay, great. So um, our, our discussion, as we also started, is in twofold. We'll, we'll start with all this about how the campuses are ready, and then ultimately get to what the concerns are on the public universities bill. But we know that we've ha we have a lot of consultations. How deeply have you also been affected by those consultations for the universities to resume? Let me start with you, Prof. The consultations have largely involved management at a higher level. However, we have gotten feedback and the steps that management has taken to ensure a smooth return to campus for the university um, final year students to complete their lectures and to do their exit exams. Um, the arrangement we had before the president's directive came that students had to return to campus was that we'll complete lectures online and then we will proceed to write exams online. The lecturers were given various options and were given the discretion to apply which one in consultation with our students. So different modalities were applied in the teaching as well as in the exam formats that we, we uh, have applied so far. Now, for University of Ghana, last Monday, as a week today, exams started and it is proceeding smoothly. And so the directive that came from the university is that this format will continue. However, the university also indicated, based on concerns received from students, that some of them uh, don't have access to um, the internet or they may not have a laptop or a smartphone to connect with Zoom or Sakai or any of the platforms made available to the lecturers to, to, teach, to, the, uh, to teach the students. And so the university proposed that those students should indicate that they have not benefited from the online teaching. And there will be uh, arrangements will be made for them to come to campus to do three weeks of lectures so that they'll be able to catch up with their colleagues who did the online training or teaching. And then they will have the opportunity to write their exams on the campus. So basically, with the most recent directive that came from the university management, the plan is that these are the students who are likely to appear or to return to campus this week, while the online examinations continue for those who are able to avail themselves of that opportunity. So far, so, so far that is where we are. Mm. Uh, uh, how does it take care of 
concerns that you as the lecturers that do the interfacing with the students? Well, we've had a number of concerns raised from the students, and we have tried to accommodate them as much as possible. Of course, some of them are beyond the lecturers. For example, some are complaining that they don't have or they are not able to use their, their data that was given them by the university. But for the students who have concerns about whether they don't have a smartphone and so on, some of us went to the basic level to use WhatsApp as a means of teaching them. And so we, we try to adapt as much as possible to meet their concerns and to ensure that lectures will proceed and end in a manner that will be satisfactory to as many of them as possible. Mm. And, and, and Isaac Hyde, if you look at the way the modalities were and the structure of the distancing and the protocols were, how do the students, based on your interactions with your membership uh, within the various campuses, uh, have uh, tend to feel about what the measures are and their return to, to the classroom? At least at the final um, I think that uh, largely, the, largely the students are fine. Um, the students are fine, except to also say that um, oh, it goes into compliance because um, we, oh, hello, can you hear me? Yes, please, Isaac, please, you can go ahead, Isaac. Isaac Hyde is the yes, president so, of NUCS, uh, yes. Yeah, so as I was saying, um, the, we are highly spirited. Everybody everybody is fine and full of um, a conducive atmosphere, except that the concerns are also there. And so uh, we are very much interested in uh, the PPEs and other materials, like the Veronica buckets and other things that's provided on the campuses. But largely, everybody is, 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 is hopeful that everything will be fine. Mm. Uh, the, 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 there's a considerable aspect about concerns raised on the health of the students as they make entry. Uh, w w what has, has been agreed with the management of the various tertiary institutions as they make entry? That whether they'll be tested or not, or uh, in terms of the, the protocols uh, of screening, so to speak. Right. Uh, so prior to our last engagement with the president and then subsequently our press conference and our recommendation, which so far appeared to have been taken into consideration before the reopening, uh, there were a number of things that we had initially called for. Um, at this stage, I know that uh, measures have been put in place for every student to be given at least three notes. <laughs> on every individual. Uh, we couldn't come into uh, a conclusion because um, we also need to look at the reality where we, where we, where we sat down with the stakeholders to realize that uh, between, JD, between the first time that we are now somewhere in March, so today, we've not tested more than 350,000. And as I speak to you, um, students in the universities alone, we have about 400, and the final year students have about 100. It's quite a number to say that everybody should be tested. And uh, the assurances we have is that, yes, over time, this thing may be considered or may be done. But in the meantime, yes, we are going to have the, the Wumita guns and other things. And then, of course, constant monitoring to ensure that at least if somebody shows any signs and symptoms, we can e e easily pick up that person from the, uh, from the masses. But as much as possible, uh, we also have assurances that uh, the, 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 the protocols are going to be observed, yeah. i.e. the social distancing, they're the reducing the number of students in, in the black. And of course, I mean, if classes are not necessary, there will not be lectures for some of these courses. Mm. And um, we've deployed our correspondents across the various campuses of some of the notable universities so that they'll bring us reports as to what the atmosphere is or uh, what the, the sight and sounds will be. When we get them, we'll bring them on screen. But also joining us is Professor Charles Marvel. He is president, the University Teachers Association of Ghana, as the national president. And thank you for, for joining us, Professor Marvel. Thank you. Mm. I, I, I know for, for where you are, and that's the UCC, the discussions at the high level have also focused on how um, the students will be largely protected. What, what happens to the lecturers? 
Okay, thank you, sir. I'm, I mean, uh, I'm a care nurse, uh, care nurse. and uh, we have protocols as the president uh, suggested, right? And so, management is following up with the directive given by the, the state, and that is the Ministry of Health and the, the other analogous institutions. And so, basically, the WHO protocols are what is going to be adhered to. And so over the last week, because um, students are coming today, I've seen some of these protocols being put in place. Uh, so but largely, that is what it is. I mean, uh, we are also hoping that because we are a higher institution, uh, put to you know adhere to the instructions, hoping that they will not uh, <laughs> endanger, endanger themselves and, and the, election, the election community. And so presently, basically, that is what we've done. Mm. Uh, uh, Professor Apjejechia, if you look at the discussions that have been had with you, you lots of the lecturers, uh, would you say that it comprehensively looks at what the needed protocols and guidelines should be and protecting all beyond just the lecturers and the students, but also other academic staff of the universities? Well, there's a saying that the sweetness of the pudding is in the eating. Um, on the face of it, things look fine. Um, but it is up to the implementation that we see if there are any gaps or loopholes. As it stands now, it is not only the concerns of students that have been taken into account, but of lecturers as well. And so we are hoping that things will go according to plan. We are very much concerned about our students. They need to finish their exams and for, for example, at the School of Law, they need to write the exams to go to the Ghana School of Law to do their uh, uh, professional law program. So it is very hectic for us, um, but we are trying to do our best to meet their needs and their concerns. And so with the structures that the University of Ghana has put into, uh, has put into place, which um, largely meet our needs and our concerns because the university is equally concerned about the well-being of the lecturers. We believe that things will work out fine, but I, I guess the implementation will tell if there are any gaps that we will need to be dealt with. Mm. Uh, the, an important aspect of all that needs to be done, Professor Marfo, is to ensure that um, perhaps there's some level of an intent to meet you halfway because of the risk you are taking. Uh, this period that you are going back to school as a lecturer, do you consider it a risk activity you are undertaking, or is it just part of the normal processes of our, your academic work? <laughs> Roland, that is a very <laughs> big question. Uh, really, I mean, for us, I mean, since this even uh, COVID-19, uh, most of us have been to school because, you know, we've been doing the online teaching and all that. And so, if it is uh, we are in a risky business, then we have, we have already been in it. I really don't think any member of us is going to uh, perhaps ask for any, you know, as you said, motivation or anything. As uh, Prof. Abhijay said, we are more concerned uh, concern about our students, that uh, they will be able to come to school and finish their exams and their interest, that they will not be infected with this disease. And so we are going the same way we think about that, we are by about them. We are also going to put in place, you know, measures so that we will come out on 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 trip. And uh, for the fact that uh, we are working well, if some authority is going to appreciate it and think that, well, teachers perhaps need some motivation, so be it. But I really don't. That is not our primary objective. We have always been in the business of teaching. We love doing that. And we are going to see to it that that job is done. The good thing about most of the bigger universities is that uh, most of the students, in fact, at KNWC, the LSAT, for example, wrote to the university management that they don't think it is entirely good for all of them to come to school. And so most of our, most of our people, hello, are, are you okay? Yes, we're okay. Please go ahead. So we, yes, so most of the students really are not there. 
Uh, so we are thinking of being able to manage it properly because uh, here in West, we only have the medical, the medical students and the pharmacy and the... I think a veterinary, I mean, those people that will need to go to the lab and also do kind of hands-on duties. And so, yeah, we are set. As Prof said, we just need to be careful and see to it that everything is uh, under control. Mm. Uh, so it's no risky job for you, Professor Etia? Uh, certainly it involves some risks, but comparatively it is not as serious compared to um, our our frontline workers in the hospitals, and we secondly the fact that it is sort of phased, so that we only have final year students now. Mm. So we think that we can manage them. They also understand the situation. So if we the, we we all follow the protocols, I think we can manage that. So it is not a risk that should be of concern to us uh, lecturers. Mm. Uh, 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 the Nooks president and uh, Mr. Hyde, if you take a look at what has transpired elsewhere in the world, uh, there seem to be some level of protection for students in some universities uh, where they, maybe they have uh, screens, etc., in front of them if they have to sit. Um, wh what have been the simulations or protocols that you think that uh, your students have been taken through or are prized of in the first place? I, I, at this stage, um, I think that we are dealing with the realities of our country. And then, uh, yes, in fact, a lot is going on at other places. For now, the best sort of um, education that we can give to our people is to sensitize them for them to really understand the realities of this disease. And so I know that um, most of the schools have put in place measures that as your students come in, you are going to be taken through some education. Um, they have also instituted internal mechanisms to periodically be, you know, going around to ensure that students are not converging and are obeying some of these uh, internal uh, protocols. That aside, um, the best thing that we can have is the individual, the individual to actually respect the fact that, I mean, this is about me, the fact that I, I need to observe these protocols for my own good. In any case, we are going to be on campus for less than... Uh, six weeks i mean just about six weeks and so if you go in too hard on yourself uh, you might end up taking the disease back home and so first of all we are doing a lot of the sensitizations the institutions are equally doing safe social media is also very much uh, inundated with a lot of this information but the ghana education service then again has not stopped with what it, it intends to do in terms of making sure that at every point in time uh, the periodical baguettes and other materials are, have content. So it's one thing having some of these things, some of the stands there, and having some of these things plays advantage point. But what good would it be if you cook a food in the market and there's no water in it, or at some point in time, a sanitizer is finished mm -hmm. another thing. That's what we are very much uh, interested in. And so we shall equally be going around and be ensuring that all these things are being observed. Um, we can go the extreme of demanding some of these things, but we're also looking at the reality. It appears that um, some of the demand, uh, the country is a bit hard to look at making good of what is available. Yeah. Well, let's go to the campus of UCC. That's the University of Cape Coast. And it's where Richard Kojonyako is joining us live. Good morning to you, Richard. Good morning, Roland. Yeah, and uh, you, you, you set up very early in the morning. What, what, what can you tell us have been your observations so far, either picked up by your own eyes or the lenses of your camera or, 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 or your shooting device? Well, so uh, life is gradually returning uh, to normal here at the University of Cape Coast. Um, the students have started trickling in. I'm standing in front of the Balco Hall, and then I can see three students who are seated under uh, some canopy the hall has erected. And so uh, they are going to take them through um, some uh, necessary protocols before they are even allowed access into the hall. Uh, as I, you can also see from where I'm standing, the security is at post, and then they have uh, a thermometer gun. They would want to um, take care of every student one after the other. The university has indicated that two students to a room. Either two, it was four, it was six, and some rooms had to take eight. But the university says that because of the social distancing and the other protocols that they need to observe, uh, they are going to have two 
of the student in the room. They've also also indicated that they've also indicated that they are not going to have um, church services and other social gathering, um, um, other social gathering here on campus because uh, they want to ensure that the right things are done. All the lectures are going to be done um, at the large lecture theaters at the University of Kipu. So they are going to ens ensure that there is some restriction of movement of students. And just as I indicated when I spoke with uh, the uh, PRO, the Director of Public Relations of the University, they say that uh, they are not going to allow students to hop on from one um, hall to the other. And so um, they are also going to ensure that they accommodate all final year students on the University of Cape Coast, their halls of residence. And so as they come, they will take them through the necessary orientation before they are allowed access into the halls of residence. Mm. Uh, I know that you've been having the interactions, as already mentioned, with authorities of the university. How many students uh, are being captured uh, in this re-entry or reopening uh, of school, so to speak? So they are expecting about 3,000 uh, students who, are, who are final years to be back on campus. They were also made adequate provisions. So uh, at the entrance here, we have um, a, a stand pipe there, and then we have the necessary washing item there for all of them. Before you gain entry into the hall, you, are, you would wash your hands and get it. So this, the school actually is looking at, at a maximum of about 3,000 students. There are some who stay outside the, um, the university halls, and uh, they call them diaspora, but the university says that they would want to take all of them in to ensure that they can monitor the activities here properly. Okay, but uh, just be on stream, we'll, we'll get back to you. Pro Professor Mafu, how, how many students and lecturers on one side, students on one side, lecturers on one side, uh, totally in Ghana, uh, ha will be captured in this reopening. Professor, okay, we've lost Professor Marfo there. Um, uh, Professor Apijetia, do you know how many uh, University of Ghana students will return back to class? Fortunately, I don't have that okay. information, but I assume it will be around the UCC figure. Mm. And when it comes to the needed protocols, uh, have you seen on campus uh, the sites that we have the Veronica buckets, the other um, facilities that will be needed to make sure we obey the protocols all in place or being deployed? Yes, before the directive came for students to return to campus, that's the final year students. Any visit to the campus indicates that these protocols were in place. If you, for example, if you want to go to the BAM library, uh, which has been open as, as, if, as, as if everything is normal, they have instituted a number of measures, Veronica buckets, uh, the spacing, how many people can be in a particular room, and so on. Mm -hmm. So it has been very strict. If you go to every uh, facility on the campus where I, at, at least I went to, you have buckets, uh, Veronica buckets in place, you have um, certain information or directions placed on the notice board for you to read before you access the facility. So in terms of putting the right structures in place while the students were not there, I think the university did as much as possible to meet the, the uh, protocol requirements. But what I don't know yet is what extra measures they are put in place to meet the students coming to campus. Certainly there has to be um, a reinforcement and a additional measures taken, but I don't know about that yet. Mm. Um, Richard, if it comes to having the students arrive on campus, what is the protocol you've seen so far, making entry into the University of uh, Cape Coast Gates? Richard? Oh, well, you seem to have lost Richard. Uh, now, hello. Yeah, Richard. Yes. Okay, so I'm asking you, what's the protocol making entry into the campus of the University of, of Cape Coast? Well, so um, right in front of the Valco Hall, for instance, uh, there are three students that are seated. Uh, they are waiting for the orientation to be done. So it is after the orientation has been done, then you come to um, this um, washing um, item that is placed here. 
So you have to wash your hands thoroughly and the running water before you go to the security gate. And then they will use the thermometer uh, gun to check your temperature before you are allowed access into uh, the university hall of residence. So that is the protocol they have put in place. And as uh, the university director, uh, director of public affairs indicated, they are going to review the measures as they go. And then as they see, they see some progress, they are going to review uh, some of the protocol they have put in place. They say that there is no cause for alarm because they are not going to allow any sort of crowd to gather at, at a particular point in time. That's why they are not going to allow even uh, a student uh, move from one hall to the other unless with some express permission or with some um, significant reason of a sort. Otherwise, they are not going to allow. Mm. Uh, but but I, I know that th there are entry gates into the University of Cape Coast. At least there's a first one that I know and there's a second one. Of course, we have some of the unapproved routes. Uh, no, no protocols there. You have to get in onto main campus before? Yes, uh, you have to get into the main campus bef beco uh, before because the university is surrounded by some... Um, some communities, and so they all use the same route we are talking about. So there is the east gate, and then there is the west gate, and so all of these gates are used by non-students as well. So they only and let the same gate that other communities that have swung around the university. They also use that, so they cannot um, use I mean, or observe any kind of protocol. Besides that, they also drive in and drive out, so they cannot ask them to get down, wash their hands before they get into the gate. Mm. Well, we'll, 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 leave, we'll, we'll make you stay on, but assign you to go uh, have some interaction with some students the next time we're on you. So uh, try, try and get some students to speak to very soon, but let's do some uh, round of questioning. And um, Mr. Hyde, it, if we have to say that this has been a successful uh, exercise uh, prior to the reopening, how would you rate it uh, from a scale of 0 to 10? Mr. Hyde, do we have uh, Isaac? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, please, Isaac. Okay. So yes, I'm saying that, um, let's say, between six and seven. Mm. And, and why is that? Okay, six in the sense that, for instance, um, before the reopening, we made a number of recommendations to the president, and um, generally all was acted in the decision-making process. Um, except that, I mean, uh, we would have wished that all things being equal, perhaps every student is tested before we go in there. That way we'll be very much sure. Um, then again, uh, we we want to wait to see uh, as much as possible uh, that by the time, let's say, going into the week, it's not just about uh, students being there, but ensuring that one compliance is very much ongoing. The fact that some of these uh, things that have been provided are very much supplied at every point in time. And so, for now, my assessment is based on what has been done at the moment. Um, we want to give uh, that, that, that form of assessment, general assessment, maybe after a week, and we can say that, I mean, there's a conscious effort in ensuring that the students are protected. For now, uh, my, my, my six to seven has to do with the effort that has been put in place in ensuring that some of these uh, protocols are in place before the students return to school. And as you saw at the University of um, Coast, you realize that uh, these were some of the assurances that our partners on the ground are giving us the fact that we're going to ensure that uh, the rooms, in fact, where the students are going to sleep at in space. Um, in fact, when you go to University of Ghana, no visitors are allowed in the various halls. So even if you are a, a, a resident of, let's say, the Gone Hall, you cannot go to the Kwafo Hall that you're going to visit anybody. And so, largely, we've seen some, some, some good works on the ground, but it doesn't end there. Um, we would have to give our honest assessment of the system after a week where we've seen that, okay, beyond what was put in place before students coming to school, there's also a conscious effort to ensure that all these things are in place at every point in time to safeguard the interests of the students. Mm. Well, my next round of question uh, will go to all of you, the same question. Uh, Professor P.J. Chua, if you look at what you were doing prior to now, uh, doing this virtual learning, virtual teaching, virtual lecturing, et cetera. Couldn't we have used it to um, complete the semester? Of course, that would have been possible. And in fact, that is the direction that University of Ghana was heading towards. So um, 
I cannot say for management, but personally, the, the news of reopening came as a bit of surprise. But in any case, like I said, the University of Ghana had in mind to accommodate the interests of students who complain about not having access to the virtual learning that was ongoing. But at least from um, my little corner at the School of Law, the student numbers were not very large. I don't know about for the other departments and, and colleges. So at a certain point in time, we're still going to give them that opportunity. But as it stands now, the majority, the overwhelming majority, in my estimation, are doing the exams. So the number of them who would not venture to go to the campus at all, because they will be able to write and finish the exams, some even within this week. And all that will be left is arranging for graduation, which we are also thinking of doing that virtually. So that is where uh, things stand. But I think basically is to accommodate those who couldn't have access to um, the online teaching that we, we made it available to the students. Uh, and this is peculiar to just the University of Ghana, you say? I will say so, yes. Uh, so uh, it means that everybody or anyone who got access to the virtual learning platforms um, will be excluded from any reopening? Yes, because they've started doing the exams online, various means. Some are doing take home, some are doing um, doing it directly online and responding to the questions, and they are given a time frame to complete, and so on. Some are writing papers, which will also be created. So these are ongoing, and they are going very well. And so for some of them, they will not be on campus at all. They are going to finish everything through these virtual means. Mm. So in a situation where we have um, a group of students undertaking certain courses and we have a percentage that maybe did not participate very well or comprehensively with the virtual learning platforms, uh, what happens? They will have the opportunity to come to campus to take part in face-to-face -face learning. And so in that situation, these students would have already indicated their, their readiness or their decision to um, the university already prior to the announcement by the president that they have not benefited from the online platform and therefore they want to avail themselves of the opportunity to be present on the campus to go through um, the face-to-face -face learning that we, we have been the norm on the campus so in that situation then we'll follow up with the normal exams we have been doing for them that is a a physical sitting in the lecture room for three hours doing exams and then the scripts being collected to be marked and so on. Yeah. Okay. Um, we'll, we'll get back to you. Let's go to the University of uh, Cape Coast campus and it's where uh, Richard Kujenya is expected to speak to a number of the students. Richard, if you have them, please let's get th that interaction uh, ongoing. Okay, Roland. So thank you very much. Um, currently, there are three students uh, that have arrived here. They are seated under the yeah. canopy and uh, they are waiting for orientation to be done let me just speak with uh, this young man good morning how are you where are you coming from okay so what are your expectations as we have been working? Um, i'm expecting to see each individual is being checked sorry, before entering and even though we have been going to be provided with the protocols we have to, the university has to make sure we are going, we are going to use it at when we are to use it. Yeah. So, um, did you bring enough um, uh, face masks and yeah, yeah, about three mm. <laughs> with uh, hand sanitizers and those what in hours? How did you feel when you were told to return to school? Well, I uh, like a because. We are not going, we are not using the, the e learning effect. We are expecting to be uh, being able to come to school to finish and go as soon as we are to finish. Okay, all right, thank you very much. Let me speak with this um, young lady. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Okay, welcome. You're welcome. So, where are you coming from? I'm coming from Akawija. Oh, okay, I presume you set up very early yeah. for you to have arrived on campus at this time. Yes, please. Oh, okay, what are your expectations? Uh, as we have reopened. I'm just expecting like the management should cool with this and also 
I want um, I want the COVID nineteen protocols to ensure that um, the like the social distance they are observing everything so that yeah they will avoid the spread of the COVID nineteen. Just wait. They should ensure that you are safe. Yeah, they should provide us with everything I think we need. No? Would you have wished that you stayed home, um, continue with the online um, learning, and then possibly a subsequent online examination? Okay, the online it wasn't all the lectures that were using it. It was just a few, and some of the topics to like. We need the lecture to explain to us, but some gave us the slides. Yeah, and it was difficult for us. Yeah, I think we come in is okay. So we come and finish, go and come go back home. And we know, yes, we are done. Yeah. So um, as you were stepping out, what did your parents tell you? They just told me to be safe. Like, I'm alone. I shouldn't go and visit others from lectures. I should come back to my room. I should make sure I protect myself, wear my nose mask. Have my hands sanitized and so wash my hands. Yeah. Are you happy with what uh, has been put in place ever since you arrived on campus? Okay, that's okay. I've just seen um, the thing, and I think it's okay. And the social distance. <laughs> this is <laughs> okay. So let me speak with um, finally this young man. He traveled all the way from the Savannah region of uh, Ghana. Hey, have you traveled all the way from that place. I presume you uh, you set up very early. You set up last night. Yes, right. so mm. I started um, by six. I left. Okay, so what uh, which course do you uh, pursue here? Um, um, Bachelor of Arts in uh, Education in Arts, English. Okay, so um, what are your expectations as you return to campus? Um, well, I expected nothing but uh, that the protocols and all the social distance should be observed. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so so that we also stay there. Um, uh, so, um, uh, COVID free. <laughs> All right, so thank you. Um, Will and so you heard me speak with some of the students who have just arrived on the campuses of the University of Cape Coast to um, restart academic activities. Uh, the last one I spoke to is a visually impaired who hails from the Savannah region of Ghana, and then he's here. Very early in the morning, he was the second to arrive here in the morning. So I presume that the students are poised to come and study, and they are, they feel confident that the measures that have been put in place by the university will help them to study very well on campus and to stay safe whilst on campus. Lines and the phone lines will be on your screens. They are. Let me just run this by you. All the phone lines by you. Zero three zero two two one one six nine one. Or zero three zero two two one one six nine two. Again, uh, let me tell you the phone lines: zero three zero two two one one six nine one. Zero three zero two two one one six nine one. And as we prepare for this, again, we have to make this announcement that um, one of the best high life singers we've produced uh, right here in our country, uh, Nana to Four, has passed on. Uh, we're just getting the news uh, uh, from our correspondent and the news wires were confirming with uh, subsequently um, decided to make sure that we bring that to you. Uh, we will do as much as possible, get in touch with his management if there's any, and then we'll get to have um, a comprehensive discussion on his contribution to high life and the music industry in Ghana. But I already do have from Dunkwa, uh, Alfred. Alfred, good morning. Good morning. Yeah, are you a tertiary uh, education student? Yes, please. I'm in the University of Cape Coast. Mm. Well, it's from your campus that Richard Kojunako is reporting from. Uh, are you already on campus? Um, no, I'm in level 300. But um, I was considering certain adjustments to what you were asking um, the high. Which is? Um, with, with UCC, we have two um, points of entry. That is the official one. And then um, looking at how it is, we could have um, put buses in place because most students are coming from their houses in buses. So probably we could have 
segregated these buses, and then we could have made um, two or three buses be at these two official points. So when students take their taxis, get to the point of entry, then they alight, they go through all the safety protocols, and then they are made to be in the bus that will carry them to their various halls. This will help to stop the spread. Because as compared to letting the students come from town, you never know what the, um, whatever protocol the person has been through. So I think that is what could have been done. Mm. Now, well, let, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. We'll ask uh, Mr. Hyde whether uh, all students will be on campus or in, uh, from town. I, I thought some of them said they were going to be accommodated on campus. Um, Frank from Adan. Frank. Frank. Well, Frank is off. We have another. Fr Frank, are you still online? No. Well, we have Francis. Francis is calling us from Oboise. Francis. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, your contribution to the discussion. Uh, my problem was um, all of them, I mean, all the universities, will they get a common entry? I mean, the first we open, we don't know where somebody. Oh, we've had a truncation of the phone line there. Uh, we'll try to re-establish the line for you. But again, if you want to call us, uh, easy does it. The number is on screen, 0302211691 or 0302211692. And let us hear from you. Now, uh, uh, Professor Etia, uh, if students want to come on campus, but originally they were out of campus students, what happens to them before they get a position or the chance to be on campus? Prof? Prof, is it here? Sorry. Yeah, don't worry. Hello. We're still with yes. you. Yeah, and we know you're still with us. But let's say students usually are the in, out, out one that you have on the University of Ghana campus. but. They are final year students, so they have to be in. What happens? What's the policy? What were you told? As confessed, I don't know. I don't know the uh, position of management on this, um, but I, I'm, I'm assuming that they should be accommodated in view of the fact that, as much as possible, the university wants to be able to monitor the movement of students and to ensure that they are observing the protocols and to avoid any likely infections. So it would be advisable now probably i'm assuming that the university has already taken the step of ensuring that those uh, non-residential students are accommodated and i think there will be enough space for them since they are all final year students mm. but as a lecturer how do you feel having students come uh, out of campus and sit in your lecture hall that has been the norm if they are out of campus it means they still come to lectures. So we wouldn't feel any difference. It's only in the house of residence that they will notice that there are some new faces, if you like, having been included in, in the in the, uh, in the house of residence. Mm. Now let's go to Enginem, and it's where we have Romeo. Uh, Romeo, good morning to you. Romeo. Romeo. Well, it looks like the phone lines are not helping us this morning. But again, the phone lines are active. If you're able to get through, it will be good uh, for the discussion. Let us know what you think. We're having a comprehensive discussion. Mr. Hyde, um, the, the students who are off campus, what's the arrangement? Or ideally, we're off campus. Final year, supposed to be out of, out of campus. So what, what do you do? Have you been able to negotiate for all of them to stay on campus? Mr. Hyde, let's go to Oscar from Rio. Yes. So, yes, can you hear me? Uh, yes, Oscar, just hold uh, on to, to my, my question. And, and then let me take Oscar. Oscar from Rio. So, good morning. Uh, good morning. I'm asking which measures have been put in the diaspora in the private hostels. Because in the University of Cape most of the finance they stay in the diaspora, the private hostels, they will not come out to the hall to observe the protocols and other things put in place in the halls. Rather, they stay in their private hostels in the diaspora before coming to the uh, lecture hall every morning or any kind of lecture. And you're asking this because you, you think that because they don't observe the protocols rightly, they are at risk of infecting and others? They just put in place in the halls, the various traditional halls. But those in their private hostels in the diaspora, 
first went on the or goes on the it, without any protocol or any care before in the day that they come to the uh, letter hall. So they can go on not observing the measures there whilst in the diaspora in their private hotels and other places. Then in the morning or during the letter hour they come there and spread it, the virus or infection. That's what I mean. So these measures have been put in place to check mm. the activities there. Mm. Mm. Well, and um, you are our last caller, and that's Oscar from Rio. So, but it's where we have to transition and, and look at the next discussion briefly before we go for a break, and that's the public universities uh, bill. But, um, Mr. Hyde, Mr. Hyde, Hi. yeah, ask the question. Um, there are some students originally who are in, out, out in terms of the rationing or the way they've been allotted the spaces uh, to be on campus. So what happens to them because they're in final year and they have to return to school? Have you been able to negotiate something? Well, the situation is um, school-specific. Uh, for instance, if you go to University of Ghana, they have given a directive where students who are outside and who want to join their police on campus would have to pay five cities a day to use the hostel facilities. Um, it's also because there's a lot of space available. I mean, in other institutions too, if you negotiate on your own, there are spaces for everyone. But I must also say that I think this conversation we are having is much centered on the public universities. But um, at the crux of this particular issue with e-learning was the private universities, because the number of them did not have the learning management systems available. And for that matter, it is the uh, private universities who are very much going to school. And number of the private universities are those who are in the majority who are going back to campus. And most of them do not have hostels um, on campus. A lot of them rely on um, apartments and private, you know, hostels across board uh, within their vicinity. And so sometimes it's difficult when you are negotiating with private uh, hostels. And so we've left it to management of the various universities so that the SRCs will engage their, 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 their management to intervene in some of these situations. Mm. But some institutions have been very flexible. Like I said, University of Ghana has given their, their students a chance. If you want to come to campus, you just have to get in touch with the hall, and then uh, you pay five cities a day, and you use the facility. Mm. That's been easy. Well, thank you, Mr. Hyde, uh, for helping us with this discussion. Comprehensive, we'll g again get back to you when it comes to the related issues about how the protocols and the re-entry for at least last uh, year student in the various universities uh, across the world, public and private, are related as we monitor the situation of reopening. Uh, but we still do have Professor Apieji Echia. He is not only a law lecturer, but also uh, speaks for the University of Ghana chapter of the University Teachers Association. Now, they are among a number of stakeholders who do not agree with the structure of the bill, the public universities bill, that's before Parliament's Education Committee. We'll try as much as possible within the discussion, uh, get some members or, uh, or, or the head of, of that committee on stream to also help us with the discussion. But Professor Apiagetia, um, the last person to add his voice, voice to the call is um, the flag bearer of the NDC, former President uh, um, John Dramani Mahama. And it looks like that definitely is a, is a problem with the bill uh, based on your perspective. Uh, can you again just do a recap of where you have key disagreements with the, the bill in its current form or structure? Yeah, thank you. We have a number of disagreements with the bill. So um, our position is an outright rejection of the bill. And we, we go on to expose the 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 reason or the underlying grounds for that decision on three grounds first that it is unconstitutional and secondly it is unnecessary and thirdly application of the bill if it's passed into law will create more problems than they seem to solve the unconstitutionality is founded on um, article 21 1b of the constitution which first of all recognizes academic freedom which is in our constitutional history has never happened. And therefore, it means that we need to apply the uh, uh, academic freedom in a context that we see it as a public good that the university should enjoy. And we also reference Article 68, 1B, which 
uh, enjoins the president or prevents the president from serving as chancellor of the university. But the bill allows the president to come through the back door to be able to appoint a chancellor for the investees. But more fundamentally, the governing council of the investees. We have a number of concerns. First of all, the president having the power to um, declare a state of emergency on the campus and end up saying that the councils can no more exist. He puts up an interim council to, to be run for a stated period. We don't know what this, uh, how this um, state of emergency is defined or on what condition we can have a state of emergency. Whether simply where students go on demonstration, we can call a state of emergency as happened on the campus of Cairn University about two years ago. Then the composition of the council. We have currently about 21 members uh, of council, but the government is whittling it down to 13. And most of this number are government appointees. And the quorum for a meeting is seven. So it means that these government appointees on their own can organize a meeting and make critical decisions for the council. There are a number of key actors on the council whose presence are vital for decision making to ensure that the university runs according to the way we want it. They have been taken out. And so that is also a problem. The chairman of council is supposed to be appointed according to Article 1953 of the Constitution, which that power is reserved for the governing council to make. But the president, by way of Article 70, according to the bill, is being given that power. That power in Article 70 is not with reference to university council. It is with reference to the National Commission on Higher Education, which um, we already have. And so it beats our mind for um, the bill to try to do that kind of jump or transition from a situation where a, a council, a body which is set up to perform a different function in trying to relate the relationship between the government and the university is now being used in place of the governing council, and which therefore gives the government the power to appoint as many members into it, as well as appoint the chairman of the council, which are all powers reserved for the university. Then we also have issue with um, the admission process. Again, the government would want to um, replace that system and introduce a system where the, the whole admission process is centralized. Of course, we have challenges with a situation where a student has to apply to four or five universities to be able to get his or place of choice. But there are alternative arrangements that can be made to ensure that this problem is resolved. It is not through a, a process where the system is controlled by the government. You already know the problems it has had with the senior uh, secondary school replacement system. And other countries have tried this, just as Nigeria, it has led to corruption and protocol uh, um, means of uh, admission, which is problematic. And then the, the bill is also saying that um, the basis for its coming to place was their financial mismanagement or misappropriation on the campuses. Mm. However, that is not supported by the facts. The facts on the ground indicate that the investors are one of the most efficiently run institutions in terms of financial management. And so we don't know where the, uh, the basis for the government to come up with that uh, statement and to say that the investors uh, have problems with management. Of course, we are not saying that investors are perfect institutions. But once in a while, issues come up with financial management. But the government has a role to play in this, in that the Minister of Finance, Minister of Education, have left some responsibilities undone, which would have contributed to the situation we are dealing with now. So we are seeing that it is not a new bill that will solve the problem. There are enough laws already in place which need to be applied. Then the fact that there is one bill or one law that is going to regulate all investors, we have a major problem with that. The investors are supposed to have diversity. There is a need for competition. That results in creativity and that results in innovation and ensure that the investors are able to set themselves apart to promote competition. When we are, we are vying for grants and so on, it depends on the quality of your grant application, which is supported by the research foundation that a particular university has. So each one has its own strengths 
that needs to be harnessed to promote the, the well-being of um, university education, for, for research, and so on within the country. If we all go by one size fits or approach, it is going to really create some challenges for the universities in, in, in their running. And not only the act itself, they are also talking about harmonized statutes. And that is also another area of difficulty because harmonized statutes spell out the details of how universities should be run on a daily basis. And if you are to have a situation where there are harmonized statutes, again, there's going to be major problems there. Wow. Then it comes to the powers that the Minister of Education has, mm. the power to make directives, which is also problematic because it will mean that somebody sitting from the outside, of course, the minister is not entirely uh, uh, unconnected to higher education, but for him to make directives, which will ensure, uh, suppose that we are supposed to apply uh, or abide by these uh, directives, is seriously an intrusion and innovation of the university's private space. Okay. So at the end of the day, mm. we have a situation where the institutional autonomy is compromised, the academic freedom of lecturers and students are affected. Issues of promotion also be affected because promotions to associate professorship and higher goes to the university council. If there's somebody who is not in the good books of the government, that would be an avenue where the person can be uh, prevented from moving ahead uh, and, and moving on in his career and, and, development. And, and, and you don't want that to happen. Right. Well, well, let's go to the campus of, of, of Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology, Kumasi.